In today's video, I'm going to be going over some features of the ELRS receivers that everybody should know, but apparently many do not. So stick around and we'll go through it. A trick I showed in another video, which I shall link to, was how to change a ostensibly serial only little receiver to output PWM. And this makes a really neat three channel PWM receiver. But today's video is the reverse. How do you output SBUS from a PWM receiver and use many, many more features that many people do not know? I'm in the process of putting together this P47 Thunderbolt. This has flaps that I've added. It has landing gear. Clearly it has aileron elevator and rudder as well as the throttle. Just to make my life more difficult, I've decided to install a gyro for wind mitigation, if you will. Therefore, we're going to need a channel to control that. Let's look at my receiver of choice and I'll show you how it's set up. This then is a Cyclone seven channel receiver. Now, this has a quirk in that Although it says it's seven channels when you buy it, it actually comes with six channel firmware. Now I'm not going to go into the mysteries of that here, but suffice it to say, there is another video that explains the ins and outs of that. This one is configured for seven channels. Let's flip over now to the web UI and take a look at how it's set up there. Here we are then connected to our receiver. And as I mentioned, it's running six channel firmware, but outputting seven channels. Go figure. What we're interested in now then is on the model tab. Let's have a look at the values that I've set. The first thing that I do is to set the serial transmit on channels two and three. Once you've set one, the other will be automatically set and you cannot change that. Once you've selected your serial, you select your protocol. So in my case, that is going to be SBUS. Now let's look at the other goodness. Normally, this would be channel one. This would be channel four, five, six, and seven. Now, because I want to use channel five, that frees up channels one and four, which would be ailerons and rudder. That's obviously coped with by the gyro. I've then remapped, I started with channel 5 and remapped that as channel 6 and that's so simple to do. All you do is to click on the value there and literally select the channel that you wish it to be. I have channel 6 which is going to be my landing gear. Channel 7 and channel 8 are going to be flaps. Now they have to be on separate channels because you can't just connect like you do with ailerons, uh, a Y cable, because they have to go in the same direction, not opposite. Therefore, channel seven and eight are my flap settings. And just for grins, I went back and changed output one to channel nine and output four to channel 10. That then is our configuration. Let's flip back over to the model, fire up the transmitter and see what happens. I guess I should have said in simple terms, even when you set a PWM receiver to output SBUS, that only affects channels 2 and 3. Now, as SBUS is being decoded by my gyro for aileron elevator rudder and throttle, we're at liberty to remap those channels as we will. And that accounts for the multitude of cables that you can see here. Every socket is in use. I've programmed up my transmitter then, and on this switch here is the landing gear. On the switch here we have our flaps, half deployed and fully deployed. And remember that that is on two separate channels. I still of course have aileron movement from the gyro, and indeed Although you can't see it, you can hear that I still have my elevator and rudder on the main model. What was that about the other two channels? 
I just put them on these two servos which are mapped to the two potentiometers. I've actually run out of switches, can you believe that? There we are then on the other channel. That's the center position one way on the other. And similarly on the other little servo there. How many channels is that then? We have aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder and gyro. And then we have channel 6, which is our landing gear, 7 and 8, which are our flaps. And then 9 and 10, the two on the rotary switches on the Radio Master. How cool is that? How to turn a 7-channel PWM receiver into a 10-channel PWM receiver. As I said at the beginning, I believe that this is something that not a lot of people no, and therefore I hope you found it useful, and many thanks for watching.